Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary and I am a professional illustrator um, and designer living in Canada. I have here the Redwood Willow swatch card. Um, this is a line of handmade paints um, made by Josie in Connecticut and you can buy these on Etsy. I was lucky enough to snag one of her swatch cards about a year ago. So this is a little bit outdated. She has a few new colors in addition to these ones. Um, she has a new ultramarine, a ruby, a bismuth lemon yellow, and a bristol yellow, which aren't on here, but all of these other colors are still available in her Etsy store. And I just thought since I found this while I was cleaning, um, I'm actually moving shortly because I got a job offer. So that's really exciting. That might impact my uploading ability for a little while um, or maybe not. We'll see. I'm stocking up a few videos ahead of time. Um, but maybe I'll talk a little bit about my new job when I figure out how it fits into my YouTube array of videos. Um, <laughs> so it's a it's going to be a really great job. Um, it's art related um, and maybe I'll tell you more later. So I just thought it would be fun to sit down and swatch these. Um, this isn't going to be a super in-depth um, swatch video like you might find on uh, Sadie Saves the Day or in Liquid Color. They do amazing swatch videos. This one's going to be a little bit more relaxed. Um, I've decided that I'm going to swatch them in sort of organic shapes like leaves and stuff just to make it fun. Um, and I'll tell you what I can tell from my using the paints in my little paintings as we go. I think I'm just going to film this uh, sort of off the cuff, uh, minimal editing. I'm going to be using a Richeson number eight round. These brushes are awesome. They hold a lot of water in the barrel and they go to a really great point. So that's really fun to mush the paint around. And uh, yeah, just as we go, I'll give you my thoughts on the colors. Um, there are already a couple colors in here that I have in one of my travel palettes. Um, after I got this swatch card, I was able to sort of narrow down which ones I actually wanted to purchase. Um, and I got the French Ochre Havan and the Prussian Blue Luxe. Uh, one thing to note about these watercolors is that on her Etsy shop, Josie mentions that they are all light fast except for the buff titanium. So you might have seen the failure of a certain brand of Prussian Blue um, in a light fastness test that Denise did on her channel in liquid color and you can go check that out um, uh, one of the recent videos mentions it but uh, Josie says that this Prussian blue Lux is light fast and that if you contact her on Etsy you can see her um, test cards I haven't seen them myself but if you're really into Prussian blue and this is a really beautiful Prussian blue um, you can definitely ask her for her test cards and that's awesome so we'll just get into it here. The paper I'm using is just my Pentallic Aqua Journal. And I would use a slightly different paper, but um, I don't have any paper laying around right now that I'm intimately familiar with, if that makes sense. I'm more comfortable with the paper in this sketchbook for telling how watercolor is going to behave. Um, the other paper I have around is some um, Arches Cold Press, and I like that a lot, but it's very different than this paper so just gonna have some fun I guess I hope you guys like this video and definitely let me know I'm just trying to figure out where I'm gonna put this I think there will work um, let me know if you like this video if you have any questions for me definitely subscribe if you haven't already that would mean the world to me and if you have any questions about my painting practice or I'm I'm a freelance illustrator, so I do work for magazines and smaller companies. I work in a client sort of relationship with them. Uh, that's going to change with my new job, which is going to be full time, but I will continue to work for magazines and stuff like that. So if you have any questions about freelance illustration or about art school, um, because I did do my degree in illustration. Feel free to let me know in the comments. I would be totally happy to answer you just in, in, in the comments or even in another video if I feel like it. Um, 
you guys have been super, super nice, and I want to sort of make sure I'm giving you some some knowledge. And uh, mostly this channel, I think, is about sharing my passion for painting, um, even though a lot of the work I end up doing uh, is a little, isn't always painting, you know? Uh, I spend a lot of time just doing formatting and talking to printers and stuff like that. But I don't know, if, if you guys like learning, um, I'm definitely willing to, to tell you, you know, <laughs> what I know, which is not a ton. I mean, I'm in my early 20s, so I'm still going to be learning until the day I die, basically. Um, but <laughs> that's sort of what art is for, for everyone. So right off the bat, the buff titanium is a really opaque color. Buff titanium usually is. Um, and I just think this one's really beautiful. It's a much more gray toned buff titanium, um, but it re-wets really nicely. It's super creamy um, and it's a really nice color. I love sort of neutral colors like that. I actually, on my gouache rotation, I use a neutral gray number two by Winsor Newton all the time. And like, obviously it's convenience gray. You can mix that, but I love it. <laughs> so, um, the French ochre light, um, from Redwood Willow is a very transparent color. Uh, it's a little tougher to re-wet. I don't really care. I don't mind scrubbing at my paints. Um, I am totally used to it, especially gouache. Gouache doesn't re-wet easily. Um, like watercolor in most cases, so I don't mind a good scrub now and then. Um, I think this leaf is going to dry with a really nice sort of ring around it. Um, so yeah, that's a very pale color, the French ochre light. Um, there's a lot of different earth tones from Redwood Willow. I think most of her line are earth tones actually, except for the new ones that I don't have. So yeah, it's just, uh, it's a super nice line, and her branding is really cute, too, like her sort of text that she has, and she actually sells coloring pages that she's made and stuff like that. I don't know, it's just a, a really adorable, adorable brand. I have a huge respect for good branding and, and really thought-out companies and stuff like that. This is the Italian raw sienna, or raw sienna Italian. Um, it's a really warm raw sienna. I really like it. <laughs> it's also a very transparent color. Um, and it's always funny for me, especially because I sort of switch back and forth between gouache and watercolor a lot. Um, the transparency often throws me, like I'm not afraid of, of an opaque color. Um, this fawn ochre is really, really hard. Like these have been sitting on this paper for a year, just to, like to give you guys a little bit of context. Um, this is paint that's been out in the elements of my, um, my little letter organizer <laughs> beside my desk for a while. Um, and they all still are, are lovely. So, <laughs> I mean... They also dry very hard. Um, there's not a lot of goopiness to these. I know like some tube watercolors, especially M Gram. M Gram is so goopy. It's like, uh, like painting with pudding or something. Um, but yeah, these dry really hard, which makes them really great for travel um, or also for open palettes. Um, I mean, they'd probably crack off of ceramic. I'm not sure, um, but they do come in pans anyway. So. Um, yeah, I think they're well suited to, to pans, um, and I don't know, they're just really nice. <laughs> I think she just did a shop update recently, which means that a lot of the colors should be available to buy. And she's based in the U.S., so shipping for the U.S. is probably going to be awesome. I live in Canada, so shipping for me always sucks. Um, and my apologies to those of you who want to order anything from my Etsy store. I do have an Etsy store with some prints and, um, with some pins as well. Um, but yeah, shipping from Canada is not cheap. 
I mean, in, in, in the grand scheme of things, it can be cheap, but like, yeah, you know, just crossing the border and all that takes a few extra dollars and our dollar isn't very strong either. So that's always fun. This is the fawn ochre, um, which is a very sort of yellowish leaning neutral ochre. Um, you can see I can get quite a lot of uh, difference in, in the tone um, going from a dark to sort of a lighter one. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a second leaf of that just to, to try and, and cultivate sort of more of a gradient. Um, but this is a really nice color too. I might buy this one. <laughs> All right, so the next color we have is Gold Ochre Light. This is somewhat similar to the French Ochre Light, um, but it's definitely, as the name suggests, more golden. Um, it's a more sort of luminous color, I think. And we'll, we'll put this down here. Yeah, so very similar colors, but this one I would definitely say is more saturated with more of a yellow undertone, whereas the French ochre light is a little bit warmer and a little bit less saturated. Um, but that's like, that's a very small difference. Um, they're both beautiful colors, of course. And let's see, I brought this over during my tiny break that I took um, because I own the French Ochre Havan. I'll just use it from the pan here. We can really play around with this. So this is one of my travel palettes, which is like, a weird mix of colors. I think I'm going to redo it in a little while and move some of these around, but mostly these are my handmade watercolor paints that live in here, the ones that come in pans. Um, so I keep my two pans of Redwood Willow colors in here. Hmm, what do I wanna draw? But yeah, this is a really warm, juicy color, I think. Um, it's sort of unique among the colors that I have. It's something that I don't have a lot of. Like I have um, commercial versions of, of yellow ochre and, and raw sienna, but I've never seen a an ochre in this sort of warm red range. It's almost like a burnt sienna, but it's not a burnt sienna. Um, this one I find is semi-opaque. Um, you can really dig around in the pan and get really, really buttery, creamy consistencies with it. Um, I don't know if you can see that there, but it can get super opaque if you want it to. Um, but also sheer out, of course. I'm going to, we'll go in order, we'll go in order. So the Prussian Blue Lux is the other one that I own. And as you can see here, it's super dark, but it's packed with pigment. It's beautiful. <clears throat> and supposedly light fast. I work a lot in my sketchbook and I also work a lot for reproduction. So that means that my paintings usually end up scanned um, and reprinted digitally. So the originals just live in a drawer with absolutely no light getting on them. So light fastness isn't a huge concern for my practice, but maybe it is for yours. But yeah, this is a really beautiful Prussian blue. It's super dark. and super smooth too. I 
and I will I'll get some more water on some of these leaves here just to show you the the range a little bit better but yeah this is a this is a beautiful color and there's so much pigment in this like just barely had to tap it and we're good to go again So that's the Prussian Blue Luxe. Um, it's super nice. Uh, those are the only two colors that I own, so I'll put the palette away. Um, the other ones in here, this is from Pfeiffer Art Supply. These are from Stone Ground Paint Co. And these are from Jasper Stardust. My other Pfeiffer Art Supply palette is over here, just while we're on the topic of handmade watercolor paints. I have a custom six pan palette from Pfeiffer Art Supply, which I absolutely love. I bring this painting quite a lot. You can see I've gone through the Heron Gray Ochre quite a bit and the um, Magpie Blue. So, moving on, we've got next um, Green Earth Light. So this is a green earth color so it's going to be very transparent very sheer um, which I don't mind it's not usually what you expect I think the first tube of green earth I bought I was very confused because there was so much binder in it I was like what what is this what's this for um, but I actually use it quite a lot for underpaintings um, and I guess traditionally it's used to add a little bit of green to some red to neutralize it without um, risking going overboard with the green because it is such a, a weak color. And, and I don't mean weak in like a bad way. Um, it's just weak in sort of a very particular way that can be useful. Um, you just have to be aware of it and know what you're getting into. But yeah, the first tube I bought of a green earth, I was so confused. <laughs> Like I was like, oh, is this a bad tube? Because um, I bought it from an art store that in my city was sort of considered a little bit sketchy. <laughs> like, um, yeah, <laughs> it's sort of where all the students went um, in a pinch, um, but nobody really went there. Uh, from the art college if they had a choice, if that makes sense. Um, I still got some good stuff there, but they just had a very um, unusual range of, of supplies. Um, I don't really know how to explain it. But anyway, I was like, oh, did they sell me like an ancient tube of watercolor that's like all bad? <laughs> um, I mean, the binder had separated a little bit, um, but now it's fine. So I'm less confused now. I've, I've seen the light of the the green earth, the terra verde. So yeah, that's green earth. This is a rather cool green earth um, compared at least to the one that I have, um, which is a, a green earth yellow shade from Windsor and Newton. Uh, so that's obviously gonna be a little bit different no matter what. Actually, I'm gonna do a larger, a larger area of that green earth over here, I think, just so we can see how it granulates. This is a relatively smooth paper, um, but we'll still be able to see it. All right, so now, burnt umber cypress. This, if I recall, is a somewhat transparent burnt umber, which is interesting. Um, again, me working primarily in gouache. Oh, no, this isn't that transparent. But anyway, me working primarily in gouache, a lot of stuff to me is transparent. Um, <laughs> so 
I like watercolor, I like it a lot, but nothing compares to the opaque qualities of gouache if you're looking for opaque paints. Not even, well, I don't know. Acrylic's weird because I find with the polymer binder, a lot of things are quite like streaky and plasticky because of course it's made of plastic. Um, so when I think of opaque, I think opaque and matte, and then my mind goes, oh, gouache, I love gouache. <laughs> um, acrylic, I really only use for uh, like murals, like things that have to last. Um, because I don't really enjoy working with the paint that is not water-based, uh, especially for paper and stuff, so. I only use acrylic where acrylic is the logical choice. But if it's just for sketchbooking or just for playing around, gouache and watercolor are my favorites. I've also tried casein, um, but casein doesn't reactivate once it's dry. Um, well, it kind of does, but you really have to scrub. Like, really, really, really have to scrub or leave water on it. It's kind of a weird paint. After a while, it does set permanently forever um yeah <laughs> all right so we're moving on to dark burnt sienna number three and this is a pretty unique color i think i don't have very much like it it's a very maroon sort of brown um to me this looks more like a venetian red than the venetian red does um but obviously they're named for the pigments that they're made with So yeah, this is a very dark, very red burnt sienna. Make some nice leaves here. Oops. And I hope you guys can also see like just how pointy this Richeson brush is. These are relatively inexpensive brushes, um, and I would definitely recommend them for watercolor. Uh, for gouache, I sort of prefer some other brush brands, but like in terms of holding water and coming to the pointiest point, um, and it, this is for like five or eight dollars, you know, this is a number eight, so. Highly recommend these brushes. They don't keep their point forever. Um, they, I definitely have some brushes that have sort of um, died, <laughs> gone extinct. But for the affordability, I really appreciate this because I feel better about, you, you know, being a little rougher with them because I know that I can replace them. Now we're dipping into the Venetian Red. And this is sort of a cooler color of a Venetian red. It's still very warm, of course, but um, I have Venetian reds that pull a little more orange than this. Um, and I have Venetian reds that are a little more opaque than this too. But we're still getting like tons of really nice pigment off of this. I think there's something about these redwood watercolors that's just like so smooth and so, um, I don't know, yeah, just like smooth and dreamy to work with, I think. Um, and I feel also that they behave really well, like they're doing what I expect them to do, um, which is make really nice consistent washes and with a tiny bit of granulation but not too much like this isn't a heavily granulating paper already which is why i like it um but yeah her her colors are just so finely milled that they they all feel creamy even the transparent ones they just feel creamy um so in that respect, I like them a lot, and I definitely recommend them. And since she did a recent shop update, it's much easier now to get her paints. 
she used to update infrequently, so I was like really stoked when I got my French Ochre Havane and Prussian Blue because I was like haunting the page for the shop update. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely recommend checking out this shop on Etsy. I think I might head over there after this video and pick up a couple other colors because yeah coming back to them now I'm like man some of these are super nice so we're dipping into the burnt umber dark brown now which is absolutely gorgeous it's a super dark burnt umber so you get all the darkness of like a sepia, but with the warmth of a burnt umber, which is, it's amazing. <laughs> That's how I feel about it right now. This is amazing. Um, I'm big into to earth tones, uh, the earth pigments. I think, like, I use a lot of other pigments, like synthetic pigments and um, sort of all of the classical, like, what you need for a full palette pigments. I'm definitely not earth colors only, but earth colors make me really happy, <laughs> I guess is a good way to put it. Like, like, painting with a nice earth color makes me happier than the brightest blue. Um, But obviously you need, you need your intense synthetic blues too. So anyway, get another thing in here. <laughs> that's kind of cute. So yeah, that's a super dark burnt umber, just like it says. Um, oh, I, might, I need to buy that one too. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to check out the Indigo Genuine, which is, that was my runner-up when I was like, okay, what am I going to buy from, from this shop update? I was like, I want the Indigo, which now I'm splashing everywhere, um, but I want the Indigo or the Prussian Blue. And when I got there, the Indigo was sold out already, so I got the Prussian Blue, which is just as good. Um... I probably didn't need the Indigo Genuine because it's a lot like Payne's Grey. Um, and I have a lot of tubes of Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey is one of my staples. So in terms of uh, variety, I think getting the Prussian Blue first was a smart idea. But the indigo is really nice, really smooth, really consistent too, and super dark. I'll water it down here just so we can sort of see how that color opens up. And you can see like it's a really nice sort of stormy, desaturated indigo. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, we're gonna go into Vine Black here. Um, I prefer Bone Black usually with my watercolors. I like how it behaves a little bit better. Obviously that's going to be made from animal bones, so if that bothers you then you know, that's that's up to you. I like Bone Black, but Vine Black is, uh, Vine Black's good too. This one, um, sort of behaves a little bit weird on the swatch card, and we'll, so we'll, we'll see how it does on, on here. And like, by weird, I don't mean that it's bad, it's just different from the other, the other colors is all. I'm going to drop some water in this one just for fun. We'll see what that does. And the last color on here is the Slate Gray Dark. So this is 
gonna be almost a black that won't ever go down to black um which is good like I I find that black often is very overpowering so if you're trying to neutralize your mixes um I like having grays around some people some people don't care for grays because you can always just make a gray but I like the um the sort of security net that gray <laughs> that gray will give you on your palette um it keeps you from from getting too dark no matter what um and the neutral gray number two that I use on my gouache palette is also a little bit warm. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's like a, it is a convenience sort of thing, um, a bit of a shortcut thing, but also they can just be really beautiful on their own. Like I love um, using gray paints for calligraphy and stuff like that. Like or just working grayscale. Um, if you don't wanna go all the way to the black, usually, like like if, for example, you've got a drawing and you want the lines to be the darkest part, then you can use a gray because that will preserve your lines as, as the dark thing because it won't approach black. This is a tiny bit of a warm gray. This is really beautiful, actually. <laughs> Maybe I'll buy this one too. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just going to do another swatch of the Prussian Blue over here so that it's closer to the, the indigo to compare and also um, because this one I sort of feel like I messed it up a little bit. Not that it matters, it's just like a leaf in my sketchbook, but I'm going to go for round two of the, the Prussian Blue Luxe. So you can see it opens up into a really like juicy, juicy blue. Um, but comparing this with the leaf over here, it looks like it desaturates as it dries. So we'll let this one dry and then we will talk about that. But that is all of the swatches that I have from Redwood Willow. And I will leave a link in the description below to their Etsy shop. So if you like any of these colors, I definitely recommend supporting um, these independent small paint makers. Uh, I think what they do is really cool, um, really great, and the colors are beautiful. So you can't really go wrong. Um, yeah, we'll go away, we'll let these dry because I've put quite a bit of, of goop on some of these and I'll give you some close-ups when that's all done. All right, so we're back. Um, I went ahead and I did some second layers on some of the colors just to see what they would do and how they would behave. Um, I definitely think that the fawn ochre is great for glazing. That's a really nice result right here. Um, and I like how that turned out quite a bit. Um, the Prussian blue layers nicely. That's pretty expected. Um, the green earth doesn't layer nicely, which is um, pretty much to be expected. It's just based on uh, the binder to pigment ratio. It sort of just melds into the, to the first layer, um, which is pretty usual. Maybe there's certain techniques that can get it to not do that, but um, yeah, I'm not surprised by that. The um, Burnt Umber Dark Brown um, looks really nice layering, and the Burnt Umber Cypress um, is very opaque, so it sort of just is adding more color on top, and that's pretty much expected. Um, here we have what I was mentioning with that Vine Black, um, how it dries sort of strangely in this sediment stepping um, texture. Uh, which is really interesting. I'm not sure I have a use for that because oftentimes my work needs to be quite clean for reproduction and magazines and stuff. So not something that I would use personally, but that's what it does. And just so you can see that there. Um, here is that indigo in these two spots here. So really nice dark, really nice light, big range of colors. Um, and here is 
that Prussian blue. So the indigo and the Prussian blue. And this dried with some really nice um, sort of dendritic fingers on it. It actually preserved that patterning quite nicely. So that's really cool. I like that quite a lot. And I also went and I did some quick comparisons over here. This is the Stone Ground Paint Co. Bone Black. And this is the Redwood Willow Vine Black. And I sort of messed with this swatch a little bit just so that I could purposely make it make that pattern. Um, just so you can see the difference between a very smooth black and that sort of patterning black. They're both cool. This is a Winsor & Newton sepia on this side and this is the Burnt Umber Dark Brown. So you can see just how dark that Burnt Umber Dark Brown does go, but it is significantly warmer, um, which I really like. This is a Winsor & Newton Terra Verte Yellow Shade and this is the uh, Green Earth Light from Redwood Willow. So you can see, um, I mean, this one is yellow shade. The tube is called yellow shade. So naturally it's going to be more yellow, but it's also a bit darker. So this is green earth light. And I think that's a really apt name for it. And then this here is the slate gray dark on this side by Redwood Willow. And this is the heron gray ochre um, from Pfeiffer Art Supply. So again, you get a little bit more of that sediment granulation effect in the redwood willow gray and black um, and you get a bit of it in the heron gray ochre as well but it's not as pronounced so I find overall that the texture that you get with these paints is not so much like traditional granulation as it is sort of the sediments drying in the water if that makes sense you get these sort of like scalloped step patterns and I just think that's a really beautiful effect and uh, I hope you liked this swatch video it's definitely a different way of doing it um, and I just thought it was chill I thought it would be nice to share this swatch card um, that I got a while ago um, just because I know they're they're not super widely available for everyone to try especially not right now I don't think they're stocked in the shop when this video is going up but maybe in the future so yeah, that's my introduction to Redwood Willow paints, and I hope you enjoyed. If you liked this video, please leave me a comment and let me know. Give it a thumbs up. It really helps with all the YouTube algorithms and all that, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!